Childhood Sweethearts. Chapter 7, Cerulean's Father. If I remember correctly, this chapter is a bit of an emotional roller coaster. But then again, it might not be, because I haven't looked at this story in years. But anyway, let's get into this. The morning was early, and happiness washed over you, because today, Cheerley was allowing you back at school. You were happy enough to go back and to get away from your room for a while after being crammed in there for most of the time you were suspended, and for once, you decided to take your beloved scooter with you for a change. With helmet on, tight and your hooves gripped around the handlebars, you didn't even wait to go up the house first before you launched yourself through the front door, thankfully not turn it off in the process, and began a speedy ride towards the schoolhouse, where you hoped to see your friends again. You darted through Ponyville without a care in the world, Adrenaline pumping through your body. The wind blew through your gelled back mane, that passed hung out through your helmet, and on the sides, and a little at the back, setting the cold sensation down your spine with a series of sh shivering tingles. Ponies hurriedly moved out your way when they saw you coming like a hot bullet, and to make yourself go even faster with a need for speed, you unfurled your white wings and began to flap them, pumping harder and harder with each flap and sending air behind you, causing you to be propelled forward with each burst of wind. With the schoolhouse coming into view and at the speed you were going at, you didn't even bother to slow down at knowing you were going to be quite early at this rate. Getting a little closer and being able to make out the forms of some of the students, a few of which you recognised like Halo and Archer, you decided to put on sure and you got an idea as you let a daring smirk cross your lips. Briefly stopping your wings from flapping, you held them out their lengths and let the wind brush over them for a moment or two before flapping them once more and lifting yourself off of the ground. In mid-air, you cheered and released your rear hooves from the board before letting yourself swoop down to hang beneath it whilst you held onto the handlebars. Cheering all the way as you performed a loop, planting yourself back onto the board on the last segment of the stunt before landing down smoothly and skidding yourself to a halt just outside of the school. Looking around, the students here early stared at you in fascination and awe at the stunt you just pulled off. You smiled your trademark smile and undid the clasp to your helmet before taking it off your head, lightly brushing back the hairs that stood up with a hoof. Amongst the crowd, you could see the faces of the three crusaders that held the same expressions as everyone else. Pure astonishment. Wow, Cerulean, that was amazing! Halo praised with those beaming eyes of hairs, sparkling like golden glitter as always. When Archer came up, he pumped hooves with you again and hugged you. Good to have you back, Cerulean. He smiled and you smiled back. When your gaze turned towards the three crusaders, you could see them all sporting happy smiles at seeing you back. Picking up your scooter, you undid a clasp at the base of the handlebars and gently flipped them down so that they rested neatly on top of the body, securely held in place. Hitting it over towards them, you pulled them all into a friendly hug, showing them just how much you missed them and when you broke away, they all gladly returned the hug as one. The whole bunch of you blushing with cheeks like pink glow sticks. It's so good to have you back, Blaze. Sweetie said, smiling. Yeah, ain't been no fun about the last quarter of us. Apple Bloom said. Maybe now that you're back, we can all hang out again and have some fun. Scootloo said with a beaming grin, followed by Apple Bloom. They all put their hooves into the air, and after a moment from her eyes to you to join in, you raised your own hoof and bumped it against all of theirs, breaking them apart as they all shouted, Yeah! In unison. As the day went on, it transpired better than you could have pictured it. No diamond tiara. Apparently, from the beating you gave her, she now had a broken nose. <laughs> you were sat next to your good friend, Scooter Lou. You were allowed back into being taught by Cheer Lee, and you were, above all, having a great time with your friends. Glad that everything was back the way you liked it to be. You smiled to yourself. Beside you, Scooter Lou mirrored your smile. Happy to finally see that once empty seat next to her, occupied again. During the lesson, you noticed that she was more engaged in her work than before, giving you the hint that she took the time she had to study with you to heart and use it to better herself to make sure her grades improved. For that, you were happy to lend a hoof. In front of you, Charlie was currently chalking up some more lines to do with today's topic. Luna and Celestia's sun and moon and space. Astronomy wasn't your favourite subject, but you were quite knowledgeable about it. From seeing Scootaloo and a couple of other students frown and pause in their writing, indicating they were stuck someplace, 
that gave you the hint that they weren't so familiar with the subject. Even Archer and Hela seemed to be stuck with it, along with Rumble, who looked as though he didn't even understand anything at all what to do. But he took a swing at it anyhow. But when the bell rang, you all made your way outside and onto the playground. As soon as you left the room, you took your helmet and scooter with you, bringing back up the folded down handlebars and walking out of the room with you after placing a helmet on your head, not bothering to fasten it to save time. Outside, you grouped with Halo, Archer and Rumble, who are now talking with the Crusaders. You guess that scene as they haven't been able to talk to you on account of um, your suspension from the brawl, they decided to talk more and try and rid themselves of boredom. Seeing you approach, you notice their frowns transform into friendly smiles. Hey guys. You greeted them with a wave of your hoof. Hey Cerulean. Rumble replied, greeting you with a friendly embrace and a hoof bump. So what? He paused for a moment, as did every pony else. Confused. You followed his gaze down to your scooter, emanating in all its glory. Is that... a Skybolt? Rumble asked, stunned, as if he just saw something of greatly iconic and historical importance. Well, he pretty much was doing just that. You smirked softly. Yep. Series A. You confirmed, the rest of the group getting in for a closer look, impressed and amazed by what they were seeing. They all stared at it, as if it put a spell on them. Rummel gave a whistle, indicating his fascination of what he was looking over. From the peeling paint to the slightly torn rubber handlebars to the scratched up blue wheels. That is one impressive scooter. These were used in the most famous races ever. How'd you get it? He asked, instantly interested, and from the look on everybody's faces, they were too. You coughed uneasily. I, um, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, got it from my dad. Is all you said. That seemed to put an all new limelight on it. This time, at hearing that you got it from your father, Rumble looked you over, clearly putting something together in his head, and you could see it in his ambitious eyes. Hmm. Racer? Old iconic famous scooter? Blue paint and battered body? White coat? Blue mane? Suddenly, Rumble let out a gasp, finally managing to piece everything together, and the sparkle in his eyes showed it. Without thinking, Meripony wondering what he has just found out, he said, Cerulean, is your dad Frosty Blaze? He asked curiously, hoping he got it right. You could have sworn your heart for it was in place, managing a small, nervous smile, not wanting to make a huge deal out of it. You simply nodded, and all of a sudden, every pony gasped loud, surprised, gasped. He clearly not expecting that to be true. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Rumble said giddily. <clears throat> hopping on the spot before jumping into the air and landing with a toothy grin behind his lips. You mean THE Frosty Blaze? One of the bestest racers to ever compete in every scooter race around the Crestia on both air and ground? You nodded again and he practically burst with excitement as he launched into the air and performed a backflip before fluttering his wings to slow down his descent while shouting with hooves around his mouth. Hey every pony! Cerulean's dad is famous! Upon landing, that unearthly toothy grin of his instantly died down when he saw your expression. You were hyperventilating and unable to calm your own breathing, making you feel lightheaded. It was very clear that the topic wasn't something you were all too comfortable talking about. In fact, it was pretty much the only topic you were so uncomfortable talking on, especially after what happened. Hey, are you alright, Blaze? Apple Bloom asked, coming up to you and worriedly holding your shoulder. You did little to acknowledge this. And without a second thought and all your rushed feelings, you turned away from the amber eyes apple bloom and deployed your wings before blasting off into the skies with your scooter. So fast that you barely even noticed your unstrapped helmet fly from your head in the process. As it came down, Scootaloo caught it by jumping in the air to prevent it falling to the ground and breaking completely. As you were flying away at an incredible speed, the whole group of six ponies watched you disappear, left dumbfounded by the outburst. Almost as soon as you were out of sight, all of the ponies in the playground seemed to have their stares pinned on Rumble, just as shocked at what they saw. Rumble blinked. Was it... was it something I said? He asked with a shrug, but only got concerned glances from every pony else. I don't know, Rumble, but I think it's pretty personal. Didn't you all see that look in his face when you talked about his dad? Apple Bloom said, seeing the others look down. Whatever the problem is... 
Whatever the problem is, I think we should just all up and give him some space. To that, Epona nodded with simple, mm-hmm, and confirming that they agreed with each other. Do you think he'll be all right? Sweetie asked, turned to the Apple Bloom, who smiled and nodded. I'm sure I'll be all right if we give him some space. She turned to her right. What do you think, Scoots? She blinked. Seeing Scoot Lou holding a raisin helmet and looking over. Scoots? Apple Bloom leaned in, also starting to look over the heavy historic history holding gear. Every scratch and mark dent into, into its surface all resembled a memory that it has seen through its time of, the, of existence, and the hard life it has been put through. Along the sides, she looked over the white lettering that read Cerulean Blaze, and moved her hoof gently over it, feeling the scratches in the plastic. Looking up to face Apple Bloom, she frowned. I'm going to go put this someplace safe for the rest of the day, she said before trotting off towards the schoolhouse. After school, I'm going to take it back to him. I'll see you guys at the clubhouse tomorrow, she said before continuing along her way and entering the schoolhouse, leaving the remaining group out of five in a quantity. Hey, Apple Bloom? Sweetie nudged her shoulder, pulling her closer before whispering in her ear. When Apple Bloom got up, the question she was asked lingered in her mind, and a soft blush appeared on her cheeks like two pink roses, and she looked back to where Scootaloo had disappeared off to. I think so, sweetie. I think she does. When school was over later that day, Scootaloo found herself walking towards Suelin's house with his helmet on her back, arriving at his front door. She banged her hoof against the wood three times and waited. A moment later, a series of soft clicks could be heard, indicating that some pony was unlocking the door from the inside. When the door creaked open, there stood who Scootler recognised as Cerulean's mother. Other than her colours, she was easily given away by a cute mark of a heart in the shape of a thunderbolt. Oh hi Scootaloo, what brings you here? She asked with a shining smile. Hey Miss Blaze. Cerulean dropped his helmet and left it at school. I'm here to return it, Scootaloo said, putting the helmet on her back. His mother nodded. Oh yeah, sure. He's upstairs. He hasn't even come out for the rest of the day, she said with a frown, herself wondering what the problem was with him and why he was so upset in the first place. Nodding, Scootaloo was allowed inside and directed up the stairs, and she headed towards Cerulean's room, where she was hoping that he was alright about what happened on the playground earlier that day. Coming in front of his door, she stood for a moment before breathing softly through her nostrils, bracing herself, and she brought her hoof up and tapped it lightly on the door, awaiting for a response. Ever since coming home early, you have had your head in your pillow, your only thought being that of your father. It was true that you may not have known him for all that long time you have been alive in, but what counted most was that when you were born and from there, him, just as much as your mother, have always been there for you, and you felt happy inside knowing that he loved you to bits. However, your thoughts were halted when you heard a series of soft taps and raps against the door. Lifting your face from a now tear-soaked pillow, you wiped your eyes with your hoof. Uh, c come in. You managed to say for a cracked voice. Upon command, the door slowly opened and in walked Scootaloo, smiling softly with your helmet on her back. Seeing her, you got down from your bed, surprised by her appearance. Scootaloo? What are you doing here? She came close to you, and her smile softened slightly when she saw how miserable you looked. I came to bring back your helmet. You dropped it earlier when you left. She passed you the helmet, and you took it in your own hooves, placing it on your bed before you hugged her. Thank you, you said, slugging your cheek with hairs, finding comfort in the inviting warmth that irradiated. When you pulled away, you could see her blushing a soft pink, yet whose purple eyes looked at you with worry. Hey, Blaze? How come we left school anyway? Rumble didn't mean to offend you or anything, he was just... You silenced her by gently placing your hoof over her lips. No, he didn't offend me, Scoots. You said simply, your voice low. Removing your hoof, you continued. I, uh... I just don't like being the centre of attention when it's about my father. You said with a frown, going back and beside your bed. You hopped back up. Planting your face back into the damp pillow, ignoring the soggy sensation around your face. Not a second later, did you feel Scootaloo come up towards you and join you on the bed, laying closely beside you, removing your head from the pillow and looking back at her. You saw her smile sympathetically. You know I'm here if you want me to talk to you, right? 
I may not have known you for very long, but I'll do my best to understand you. She said, dripping her wing over your back, and you found comfort in the softness of her touch. Scoots, I... Oh, thanks, but... I don't know. You scratch back at your neck awkwardly, avoiding eye contact. No matter how much you tried to avoid the topic, Scoot Lou was persistent on letting the matter slide. She tried not to press too hard, or to force it out of you, but more or less stayed close to you, and did her best to comfort you. After a while of hanging your head, you turned back to face her and let a happy but weary smile spread your lips. Well, alright Scoots, um, I'll tell you, just please promise me that you'll just keep it between us. Okay, please? Scoot Lou smiled. Sure thing, Blaze. Open your wing. You draped your own over Scoot Lou's. Then being longer than hairs, they managed to reach ever so slightly over her side, and from her facial expression, you could tell that she was amazed by how soft and how well preened they were. Scoot Lou, my father, a frosty Blaze. He was the best dad a kid could ask for. I always used to look up to him when I was growing up, and I did my best so I could turn out like him. You told her, trying to keep your emotions in check. Motion to your scooter with your eyes. Scooter Lou following, you continued. He's the reason I took up scooting and why I'm so good at it. He's the reason why I wanted to get into racing. I... I want to be just like him. A single tear ran on your cheek. And you could feel an invasion of them ready to bow out your eyes. That now starting to sting them. Scooter leaned forwards and wiped it away with a hoof. What happened to him, Blaze? She asked, interested yet cautious and upsetting you more than you already are. He... He... He died, Scoots. He died in a race. You said, some of the tears breaching her eyes and pouring down your cheeks. Scoot Lou gasped in her eyes now began to sting with tears of her own, and she threw her hooves around you, hugging you close. You two placed your hooves around her and held her close, nuzzling her cheek. I... Oh, I... I'm sorry, Blaze. I... I had no idea. She managed through her own tears, releasing her. You used your hoof and wiped them away, smiling at her. It's alright. It's alright, Scoots. It's alright. You said, pulling her into a brief hug. Things may have changed for me and Mum since he passed, but... But as long as I have his scooter, I'll always have a part in my, in my life. You wiped your eyes and sniffled, trying to regain your composure from your emotional breakdown. Scootaloo didn't say anything for a moment, and only hugged you. Now that she knew the truth, all she wanted to do was be there for you. You smiled internally at that. You found it nice to have someone else you could relate and talk to other than your mother, and it made you feel warm inside that knowing ponies still cared. You didn't know Scootaloo all that well just yet, but there seemed to be a connection between the two of you that made you both click, like you were meant to know each other from the start. Although you did find it odd, you enjoyed hanging out with her, and you found many things that you liked to do, there were things that she liked to do too, and also had an interest in. The two of you were kind of like lost siblings in a way. If only there was some sort of way for you to tell her how you truly felt about her without pushing things too far. You really wanted to tell her how much you liked and cared for her, but the only thing holding you back was the fear of what may come if she doesn't feel the same way about you. You were both friends for the moment, and you didn't want that to change over something like telling her the true feelings you have for her, over fear of destroying the friendship you have. The last thing you want is for that friendship to sink. Eventually, the two of you broke away from the care and embrace, and Scootaloo hugged you goodbye before turning to leave, asking you to come back to Apple Acres tomorrow and something about a clubhouse as she closed the door to your room.